I, I'm going to pose this question maybe for everybody, and if you have something that comes to your mind, maybe you can answer it. Um, but I know we've kind of dealt with the family loyalty from the, I don't know if you would call it philosophical standpoint, as far as learning to build that through communication, you know, the faithfulness and the discernment. Um, but, but a little bit maybe more physically or practically, how do you build or what things can you isolate as we look over our past growing up in our family? What things were done to build that family loyalty among each other amongst our family, not counting, you know, dad sitting mm-hmm. us down or talking to us or communicating to us. What are some things maybe that you look at and say, these are things that were the building blocks that ultimately built built a tight knit family? Because there are a lot of families that have the same structure. I mean, mm-hmm. two boys or two girls or four kids or five kids or whatever. And they grow up, but they don't have that personal communication with each other. They don't have that you know, those close ties where they, they really don't feel any responsibility of, you know, if I do this, I'm going to hurt the name of my family or, or if I do this, I'm going to be separating from my family. They just, that's almost like non-existent and things weren't built in that family loyalty department. So I don't know if anything. I I think that the structure of our family, I, mom and I drew our structure from scriptural example. So the greatest father that ever was, was our heavenly father. And he had a son. And there was a way that Jesus submitted himself to his father. And it's kind of unique, but God put it that way and gave labels so that we could draw lessons from that. So there was often times where I looked at you kids and said, Look, I made you. I'll take you out, and make another one look just like you. You know, <laughs> somewhat a joke, but you were like, "Oh, I'm not going to cross him out." You know, when I was serious, um, I would tell you, I I have sovereign privilege. God has sovereign privilege. God is sovereign, mm-hmm. and so I would teach them sovereign privilege means I can do whatever I want for any reason for whoever I want, whatever. and and you have nothing to say. You can't sit there and get bitter. I may take Bud out and or will out and go to McDonald's and come back and all the kids are seeing the McDonald's wrappers and he's got his little cup with a milkshake in it. And he's walking in and all the kids are like, oh man, and they weren't allowed to do that mm-hmm. it, because dad had something. But what it produced in them was if I please my dad, there'll be my times where he does things special mm-hmm. with me that he he's not going to do with them. and it, And it caused them to to not get mad at their authority, but to wait patiently for that same. So I think a lot of practical, just ordering our family. And, you know, they say the wife is the Holy Spirit of the home. And I do think that at times you can do equations like that where my wife held the, my authority. And when I wasn't there, she was there, <laughs> you know, as the Holy Ghost did, you know, that she would report back to me. And that's the I Holy Spirit. I can think of so many things parenting wise that we did try. I think it's an interesting question because I am curious what each of you guys think yeah. about that. But the thing I want to throw in before you do that is as much as we tried, Looking back, I feel like God took up yeah. mm-hmm. for our ignorance. Um, there were some things just following the will of God that he gave to our family, and it was unbeknownst to us at the time. So being out in Brewster, being out in this small yeah. town where we yeah. knew we were following the Lord's will, and yet I feel like that had a big impact on our family being such a close-knit family. The singing the kids mm-hmm. singing with each other, Son constantly having Lord. to work together to harmonize their voices, their words, figuring out, you know, all Stay of that. Staying in your lane. Staying You're in peck, your lane, pecking, but working with together. Pecking orders. It's like authority. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of those things were in the music. Yeah, in the well, in music. Out of you know, when I wasn't there and you weren't there, the oldest one <laughs> was in charge, but the oldest one also. Got in trouble for what mm-hmm. the little ones did, you know. So te- <laughs> teaching that pecking order, that's why she's bitter at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but teaching that pecking order was a process that taught them properly. So sorry. Go ahead. No, I was done. So okay. I was curious what they have to say. 
Uh, I, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead. Okay. Ladies yeah. first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um, that is an interesting question. When you boil everything down to the practice, what can you do in a family to, to foster that? I think, um, Mom, you sort of mentioned this here a second ago, but talking about how, you know, service and church and how that was – that was the center, you know, of our life. Now, obviously, our dad's a pastor, so for us, it was like it's just where we are. Like we're we're all on staff. I just I'm not punching a card. I'm the free labor. <laughs> well, <laughs> I say free labor, free labor, free you labor. Really, it was dad redoing everything we did, right? So <laughs> and paying for lunch, right? And paying for lunch, exactly. Uh, but I think you know the work working together, because um, because here's the thing. It's a lot of it is just communicating. It's just communication. Well, how do you how do you just do you just sit down and go, all right, let's let's talk. <laughs> it usually doesn't happen that way. Not that it can't, but it usually doesn't. So what do you do? You work. And when you work, you gotta talk to each other. I mean, you're you're not gonna and here's the other thing. What's what's interesting about it is the more you work together, the more you realize you don't have to talk as much because you think the same. You're on the same page. Yeah. And that's that's the thing about it. We we got on the same page. It wasn't just the work; it was the fun. We would have fun together, and and uh, uh, our family. We were, those were the ones we had the most fun with. You know, yeah. about people. I'm going to go out with my friend this weekend, or you know, kids. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. It was like I'm going to hang out with my family. What are you go talking about? Like, what, yeah, go down to the river, jump off the bridge. <laughs> Yes, we jumped off the bridge. It wasn't that big of a bridge, but you know, You're pushed off by your dad. They asked you that question: If your friends jumped off a cliff, would you? Absolutely. Yes. You know, I'm not friends, friends, friends with my brother. Family. Yeah, family. <laughs> my family. Jumped, I'd do it. Definitely. Right behind you. But fun. So work and fun. And I talked about music. You know, in service to the Lord and in in uh, praising the Lord and that unity that we got from all being on the same team. Giving. Give, right, together. giving sacrifices, the sacrifices that you either endured together as a family or individually and in the different areas. excitement we shared. Remember when I brought home the 100, 100, uh, mm -hmm. $1 bills and oh, I yeah. threw it up and we were like, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen so much money, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the little things. Uh, you, you can bring me $100 bills anytime. It was a big thing. But, but in... in uh, Putting everything together, there's one other aspect that I think is missing from a lot of homes. Because I think a lot of people know how to have fun. You know, they might work together here and there. Uh, you know, serve the Lord or go to church together. There's one area that is not a joint thing that everybody's really involved in. It's it's the leadership of the home. And having a, having a single person who's willing to take the responsibility for leading the home and taking... You know, taking the flack if they make the wrong decision and not getting the credit when they make the right ones. Your mom's done a good job. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if, if you were to sum it up in a word, I would say discipline. Yeah. Because how can everyone be on the same page if there's not someone organizing the there's way no we shepherd. think, the way we act, right. the way we... And, I, and I, I, if you remove discipline, it doesn't matter if you have service and fun and work and... Discipline is the structure that keeps that all moving. The the conversations that we've had, they weren't born out of a, hey, let's talk about what we agree about. It was born out of a, you dummy, here's why you did that. And, you know, we're going to talk about it. Or you're going to sit there and listen, and I'm going to I'm gonna talk to you about it, you know. And uh, really shaping the way that we thought as kids. And, and the only other thing I wanted to say was that faithfulness and discernment, they're really joined by this one thing called prudence. You know, the prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. That is that discernment to make the right decision in faithfulness. And I'm thankful that that we've been guided in prudence, you know, in being pushed towards the Bible and made to think about why we did what we did, even yeah. though sometimes my brain overheated when I was trying to figure <laughs> out why. But, uh, you know, I think that if you practically want to put it on a level, all those elements, but if you don't have discipline, if you don't have that authority in the home, it's, it's not going to matter. Consistency. So, mm hmm well, you said it all. That's so oh. I'll say. I was uh, I was actually going to say, you know, playing hard together, but working hard together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you covered all those things. Um, I, I would say specifically because we were in the ministry, our pa our dad was a pastor. Um, I never felt like dad had to go. Uh, he, I don't, I, very rarely did he ever say, y'all have to stay here. I got to go be a pastor. So I never felt like we were on the back burner. It was... I got to go be a pastor. You're coming with me. <laughs> it, we, we did it together. Not that we pastored, but, you know, we were, if the, if something broke at the church, 
we were all here helping. Yeah. If a pipe burst, we were all here sucking the water out of the carpet together. With a vacuum. With a vacuum. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just no. want to clarify that. A straw for you, and you get a straw, and you get a straw. Let's go, guys. It's a great family activity. Yeah. You can chug Life with the Reeves really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's funny. Uh, so, you know, working together, but I think you were also really great at making sure we had times where you played, and we played just as hard as we worked. Um, but together as a family, not just, oh, kids go out to the backyard and play. I mean, there were times, but, mm. but you know, dad was real big at being involved in what we were doing as well. And that, I think, just helps you learn how to uh, think and process a little bit. Yeah. I had something else, but it, it fell out in my head. So it's not a bit important. Yeah, I'm not going to let my wife escape this one because I think I th- we, we were talking a little bit about this and... I think there are a lot of people that are listening that may are coming from a different perspective. They're not maybe full time in the ministry. Mm -hmm. They're coming from a home that is a layman and you know, that they're deacons or they're just faithful church members. How do you foster that same type of uh, closeness, family loyalty when you know, your family isn't going to be at the church. It's not going, it's just not going to be at the church as much as we were growing Mm -hmm. up. So how do you, it can still be done, but how, what are some things that you can look back and, and see? My parents were both, not just my dad, not just my mom, but both together, were very involved in spiritual things. So my dad would, growing up, he would take weeks off of work to be chaperones for camps, for wow. youth conferences. He would drive the bus for soloning. So he was always looking for ways to be involved with us, not just taking family mm-hmm. vacations mm-hmm. or just strictly the fun stuff, which we did. but finding ways to be involved with us spiritually, I think was a big thing. And then even just having family dinner every Mm -hmm. night around Mm -hmm. the table, I couldn't get away from that. And family devotions too. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a lay person. So, you know, family devotions wasn't something hyper spiritual, anything like that. We actually had like a felt board with little felt pictures when we were kids. Flannel graph? Yes. (laughs) So he would tell stories and post them up when we were kids. Regular Baptist press. Oh yeah. Um, but even <laughs> lost art, just things like that. Simple things, people. Uh-huh. What about the other aspect I, I think you were talking a little bit about? Not just parents bending over backwards to be a part of your life, but flipping that around. What? We would go to my parents' work events if they had to. My mom worked for a hospital, so a lot of times she had, I don't know what you would call it, like fairs and stuff she would have to work at weekends. So whenever we could, we would join her, go to my dad's work Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. events when we could so he played mm-hmm. uh you had mentioned to me that he had the obviously it's a bigger church so they had this great thing of men's softball, softball league, league or whatever they had a church <laughs> and the mom your mom would drag all of the kids to go oh, root on awesome. dad mm-hmm. you know embarrass mm-hmm. himself in front no i'm just kidding <laughs> um, but but i think i think that was an important yeah, aspect that, that it's not just and mm-hmm. how it worked with our family was dad would bring us mm-hmm. to church and it wasn't just dad's doing construction We're, right. and it it was it, it makes the family one instead of Work is is dad's work, you know, home is mom's work, church is church work. Everything's together. Family. Everything's yeah. family, family togetherness mm-hmm. or oneness. And so I just think that's an important quality that everybody who's listening should should apply with their family. If they have young young kids or a family that they're starting out, having that desire of being a part of your kid's life but also making sure they're a part of yours. Mm-hmm. And from the fam- from the ministry perspective, I have heard it said um, from preachers that a lot of times they look down on bringing ministry home. You know, they yeah. don't when they're when they're yeah. home, they're home, and ministry is ministry. But it was a little bit different growing up. You always brought ministry home. I mean, mm-hmm. you talked about what you were, and it wasn't to talk about people just to talk about people or gossip. It was making your life our life. And what that did is it's no longer it's not. Our, am I going to grow up and and serve at, at church on staff at my dad's church? No, I'm going to grow up and serve on staff at, at my church, because it's it's one. And I think that's that's securing that ball of unity, you know, where it just is so much easier, so much better and stronger to work together because it's it's yours. Yeah.